One of the first to be attacked was Guatemala, one of the small countries of Central America known dismissively as banana republics. This is Guatemala City as seen from the air. People who live in the city dress very much like the people in our own southern states. There are many churches and people go to church regularly. They speak Spanish, of course, as most of them are of Spanish descent. In fact, most of the people of Guatemala are not of Spanish descent. They're indigenous Mayan people and very poor. In the 1950s, 2% of the population of Guatemala control the natural wealth in collusion with giant U.S. corporations like the United Fruit Company, which dominated banana growing. On the board of United Fruit was John Foster Dulles, who happened to be U.S. Secretary of State. His brother, Alan, happened to run the CIA. Both were Christian fundamentalists who regarded any opposition as the work of communism and the devil. In 1950, this man, Jacabo Abenz, became the first Guatemalan leader to be democratically elected by a majority of his people, who saw in him the hope of social justice. He was the Hugo Chavez of his day. What was going on in Guatemala is that there was a democratically elected president um, in 1950, Jacobo Arbenz, who, who sought to institute a series of New Deal-style reforms in which the state had a greater role in both developing the economy and redistributing wealth. And the centerpiece of that was a land reform. Arbenz was far from radical. His land reform policies were modest. But Washington was having none of it. Howard Hunt was then working for Alan Dulles's CIA. So they said a decision has been made at the highest <clears throat> levels of our government to rid Guatemala of the Arbenz uh, regime. And uh, we would like you to participate in it. Uh, you will be uh, the chief of uh, propaganda and political action. In Guatemala, what the CIA did was mobilize every facet of American power. It didn't just isolate Guatemala militarily and diplomatically, but it used the techniques of social psychology in the nearly year-long campaign, which created a sense of crisis in Guatemala. What we wanted to do was have a terror campaign uh, to terrify our bench particularly, terrify his, his troops, much as the German Stuka bombers terrified the population of, of uh, Holland, uh, Belgium, and, uh, and Poland at the onset of World War II. And that's what they did, so that the United States could control the economy of Guatemala, destroying the dreams of its people. We sowed confusion through the countryside and of course we had, by this time, we had aircraft uh, flying over and dropping leaflets and doing a little harmless bombing. A little harmless bombing and a CIA terror campaign cost thousands of lives. Arbenz, the Democrat now branded a communist, was humiliated, stripped naked, and photographed before being forced into exile. Richard Nixon, then Vice President of the United States, flew in to congratulate the new dictators. That Guatemala is going to enter a new era in which there will be prosperity for the people together with liberty for the people. General Rios Montt was to be one of Washington's faces of liberty. During his time as president in the 1980s, thousands of people were murdered by death squads, most of them indigenous men, women, and children. His guns and helicopters came from the United States. President Reagan flew in to warmly endorse the general, whom he described as a man of great personal integrity. <laughs> 